Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of It Goes Off. We've just finished round 14. In fact, it was the first round of the 2012 INET NBL season. And it was an interesting one for the Melbourne Tigers and a few goings on also between the Gold Coast plays and the Wollongong Hawks. Joining me, as he does most weeks, is Grantley Bernard. Grantley, welcome to the program. Not sure if you saw the Wollongong game between the Hawks and against the Crocs, but Paul Warpert just got very agitated with the officiating. And for the first time, I believe, this season, we saw a coach ejected from the venue. Mm. Yeah, look, it's an interesting one in the sense that he's got to front the tribunal. Uh, Obviously, by the time people see this, that'll have been dealt with and he'll have received his punishment or he'll have walked free. Um, but from my point of view, I'm surprised that there's not more of this. That You know, I, I think the players and, and coaches in general are treated extraordinarily leniently by the right. referees. You know, you, you, you so see... You'd, so you'd like to see a few more texts called along the way? Well, I, I just think I think coaches and players need to, need to pull back a little bit. Mm. You know, you see... Uh, you know, fans are complaining, oh, the referees, the referees, the referees. You know, and, and you talk to players off the record. <laughs> well, you know what? You know, pull your head in a bit mm. and just worry about playing. I think over the course of, of many, many years, players and coaches have got away with murder when it comes to treating the referees with disdain. You know, they've, I, think, I oh. think it's time for the referee to strike back. Well, the referees have struck back on this occasion, and I think when uh, you take a look at the vision, you see Paul Walpert, he he crossed the line, and and he he got his whack, and he he got ejected for the game, but I actually don't agree. I think, by and large, the coaches and the players are extremely well behaved in our game. When you compare it to many other sports, there is a level of respect there for the officials. Now... It always can be argued about that grey area about whether they need to pull them up a little bit earlier or not. But um, players make mistakes, referees make mistakes. There's a bit of emotion in the game, and you've got to allow a little bit of emotion by uh, by both the officials and the players. Otherwise, you know, you don't want robots running around. Some, out there. some things never change, do they? No, I'm, you're well, back on the fence. I'm not on the fence. You're back on the fence. I am not on the fence. What I am saying, Grantly, no. is that by and large, the competition is very well behaved. And and I think that what we saw here is an example of the officials uh, having a level of tolerance. And once you cross that line, boom, you're going to be tossed. So well, he got his fair whack. I think, I think over the course of time, that tolerance has just been extended, extended, extended. I think it's time for it to come back in. Yeah. And the referees... And, and it happens quite regularly, though, the, doesn't the, it? They, the, they do go on a bit of a... a the uh, referees, you know, have been told to crack down on audible obscenities, etc. this season. But I just, I, you know, I think it's time for the players and the coaches just to come back a little more in line right. than where they should be. Fair enough. Well, it remains to be seen what happens to Paul Walford, but uh, he did cop a fair whack, got ejected the, to the game. And in some way, it might have actually helped his team because they end up coming away with a, a very impressive road. Oh, win. Liam Flynn loved it. <laughs> he got, 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 got the, the big W. Seat. He got the W in got. the big chair. Uh, Grantley, the Melbourne Tigers, round 14, we saw them take on the two top teams, the Perth Wildcats and the New Zealand Breakers. They came up empty in both. I suppose if you're a Tigers fan, the thing that you can hang on to is in the first half of both those games, they led at half time. So they have the tools to compete, but they just weren't able to do it for that extended period of time. A lot's been made of the fact that Tommy Greer wasn't there in the game against Perth. And also a lot's been made of the fact of that Matty Burston hasn't been around for a couple of weeks now with a hamstring injury. Hopefully he'll be back this weekend. Is that enough that the Tigers fans can hold their hat on uh, the fact that they've just down a few players and then once they get those boys 100% fit, that they'll be right? Yeah, possibly. I mean, uh, as I recall last week, you sat here and said the Tigers are in the in the playoffs. It's over. Forget about you it. You said that. Now, I what I would say you is said that, that what I would say is that those those couple of results on the weekend, <laughs> while disappointing, are not disastrous because you've got to remember one was against Perth mm. in Perth, championship favourite. Mm. One was against New Zealand, defending champion, albeit on their home court. Yes. Now I think the problem is lack of personnel. They haven't really replaced Paddy Mills on the roster. As you say, Burston's been out, Tommy Greer was injured. And as it is, so they've basically got an eight-man roster as yeah. it stands, and Trevor Gleeson seems loath to even use all those eight men. 
So I think probably by the second game of the weekend, this weekend, the legs were probably feeling it a bit. I think they need to add to that roster, get another good competitive body in there, spread the load a little bit, and, and they could be okay. Well, I haven't seen a lot of the New Zealand breakers this season, but from what I saw on Sunday against the Melbourne Tigers, they are going to take some beating for this year's title. They're the defending champions, and uh, they've got a, an absolute dynamo in Cedric Jackson. They've got a good spread, uh, spread of uh, youth and, and experience, so they're going to take some beating. But one of the other surprising things of round 14, there was five games in the round. Three of the wins came on the road. Now, we've spoken about this throughout the course of the season. That's a great observation. I, I, I'm there, I, I dissect the yeah. facts, and it is a, it's a fact that it's there to say that the road teams this year are just getting more wins than they historically have, I would believe. No, oh, well, look, it might be historically, I don't know, we haven't, we we haven't go back dug that, that far. far. No. But, it, it, look, it's just an example of whether you're home or away, you've it's got irrelevant. a chance of winning, hmm. and you've got to be on your game. No whistle or buts. No, that's for sure. Uh, uh, Grantly, uh, one of the other things that we've, uh, that's been put out there this season is that a survey was put, put out earlier on in the year to all the different players, and there was a lot, a lot of questions that were going to be asked a, a, about the um, various elements, like who's the best shooter, who's the best rebounder, uh, those types of questions coming so from the players. this would be the NBL Players' Choice Poll? It is the NBL Players' Choice Poll. It is the official title of the, uh, the, the little survey that was done. But I would su- suggest that in the most improved category, and a player that's going to have a, a huge impact on this season would have been Daniel Johnson. And he has not let us down, or anyone down for that mm. matter. He is having some sort of season. Yeah, it's over the line. Engrave the trophy. Right most now. improved? Yep. And... I would look. I think probably out of Adelaide's season so far, mm. I'd say him and Diamond Simpson are probably maybe the only two positives mm. out of the whole train wreck of a season that they've had so far. He has been fantastic. Well, they've had their injury problems. And but, what would the Melbourne Tigers give for him right now? Well, and the Melbourne Tigers tried to hang on to him, but uh, unfortunately, during that period of time that he he made his way. I think uh, perhaps a little bit more incentive to go and play with the Adelaide 36ers, but they would imagine if the, if the Daniel Johnson was playing for the Melbourne Tigers right now, that they would be right there on an equal footing to the New Zealand Breaks and the Perth Wildcats. Uh, but the, the thing about the Adelaide 36ers, Grantley, they have underperformed. I know they've got the hard luck stories with the injuries, but from what I'm seeing, they are still have got some a lot of talent to work with, and at five and ten. It really hasn't been good enough for the Adelaide 36ers this season. Well, traditionally, that's not an Adelaide performance, 5 and 10. But uh, I I think it is what it is. It is what it is, but um, I think that they should be doing a lot better than what they are doing at this point in time, even though they've had some, uh, some injuries there. I... One other thing that, um, uh, that's been very important this week is the form of Jeray Grant. Now, it's, come, it's very important because we spoke very, very positively about Jeray Grant last week on the program, and he's come out and he's had a Player of the Week performance in Round 14. He's been uh, fantastic. And I think he's one of the, as we said last week, he's been one of the import finds mm. of the year. And, and if you're the Sydney Kings or another NBL team, I'm... I'm going in there right now with a with a contract to try and keep him. He has been fantastic and uh, just improved every week. You just see the confidence and the ability of this young man improving. So he's a good one. It was December and the uh, Player of the Month and the Coach of the Month awards have been announced. And for Cameron Tregar for the Melbourne Tigers picked up the Player of the Month for the month of December. And well-deserved. I think he's uh, he's on MVP pace. Leading the league in points per game. And any time you do that, you're always going to come into MVP calculations. And uh, he is playing some very, very good basketball for the Melbourne Tigers. And the coach of the month was Andre Lamanis. And probably fair enough. <laughs> well, when you're sitting on top of the ladder, he had a little bit of a hiccup, but that was just in this month. The last lost the last two before there. Would any, any of those guys, would they feature in the uh, Players' Choice poll? Uh, Jeray Grant, you're talking about? Any of them? Uh, oh, I think they all would. There's a, there's a plethora of questions and we'll, uh, we'll, you know, who is the best passer in the league? Now, we saw that... It wouldn't have been you. Uh, we saw that on Sunday in Cedric Jackson. Ced. Ced's probably the man. He's leading the league in assists, but above and beyond that, he has got 
a little bit of Dale McDonald about him. He does it in a, in a different way, but the way he finds the open man, he was uh, absolutely sensational. And it leads us into our next sec- uh, segment, uh, Grantly, and it's called Who's Hot? Who's Not? Now, uh, I, I like to touch on the, the, perhaps some of the better performances in the competition. And Jacob Holmes, we have spoken about him really since round one, but he just continues to deliver. And again, on the weekend, 13 points, and he was three of three uh, from three-point line. And he also had 16, that's right, 16 rebounds and seven assists. Not far off a triple-double himself, and he has just uh, had an amazing season mm. considering he was on the chopping block and without a team a few weeks before the start of well, the season. Well, he, he was more than on the chopping block. The He's head gone. was off. He was gone. He was out. He was out of the mm. league. He was done. Um, but here he is in Townsville, driving the combi, studying law, tearing it up. He is. He, it, it's a great story. It it's is. a great story. Good on Even though he's a South Australian, it's a great story. <laughs> We've touched on it uh, already, but Cedric Jackson almost had a triple-double. Now, he is diminutive in size. He had 11 points, 9 rebounds, 9, and 11 assists in the game against the, the Melbourne Tigers. We don't hear a lot about him here in Australia, but he really is the reason why the New Zealand Breakers have been able to cover the loss of Kirk Penny because they've got a superstar point guard. He's probably really brought a different element to the Breakers, mm. hasn't he? That they, you know, they've had good players running the floor for them in the past, mm. but he's probably just a little different element. And as, like you say, he obviously doesn't fill the Kirk Penny role. No. But he's allowed other people to do that. You know, Coletto comes in as the shooter now. And, and he makes sure they all get the ball and he pushes the pace of the game. He's, he has been very good. No doubt. He is, uh, if you get the chance to go see this uh, young man play a game of basketball, get out there and check him out because he is something special. Also hot this week is the Perth Wildcats. They've got come in the nominations for the Who's Hot section because they've won four out of the last five. And uh, again, they just they just keep on keeping on, don't they, the Perth Wildcats? They're starting to get healthy now. And with that unbelievable home court advantage they have, they are playing some very good basketball. Yep, I think it just, like you say, it's the same thing every week. They've found their consistency now. They've found their level. They're going to be very hard to beat from here on in. And Grantly, uh, talk us through some of the perhaps not so hot uh, performances that's caught your eye over the <laughs> last week. You're soft. <laughs> you are soft. Well, if, I think not hot is, is uh, definitely Paul Woolpert. He, I mean, he was hot under the collar. <laughs> but if you get tossed into the tribunal, you're definitely not hot. No. The Melbourne Tigers, an 0-2 weekend, down the tube in, in the second half of their games, in both games, not hot not from hot. the Tigers. Mm. And, and the Wollongong Hawks, mm. stone cold. Mm. 57 points against the Crocs and only six in the third quarter, and they've lost six straight. They're plucked. Grantly, we're not going to do the 24-second shot challenge this week because we thought it was a time to have a look at some of the rookies that are going on this season, some of the new players coming into the competition. And really the standout performance has been that of Anatoly Bose from the Sydney Kings. He has been very, very good. Had some injuries, but been very, very good. Anyone else in the rookies that have caught your eye? Not really. I mean, probably... Yeah, look, I mean, it's a tough gig coming into the NBL and trying to establish court time as a genuine mm. first-year rookie. Mm. Over the history of time, it's been relatively rare that you get a big bunch of, of great rookies in one season. Well, it's probably less likely these days because many of the young players now are going over to play college basketball. True. Back in the day when we were playing, a lot of them, the Sam McKinnons of the world, Chris Hansies, that those... Genuine yeah. superstar youngsters, uh, you, you'd come straight into the NBO and have an impact. But nowadays, the college no. route is more it, popular. It, it's very hard, mm. anyway. To break in, it's very hard. Uh, but Bose, for me, is the standout. I think Everard Bartlett mm. has, has done a great job catching on at Perth and then with Adelaide. Mm. So I think we're going to see more of him. I think he's going to be a keeper for the league eventually, finally. Um, but I think if, you, if you're talking Rookie of the Year right now, uh, the Sydney Sound Machine is over the line well and truly. Uh, yes, that, oh, you would think so. I, I can't see anyone. He's averaging 13.6 rebounds per game. And uh, other honourable mentions, Greg Hire, I think, for the Perth Wildcats is doing some good things coming off the bench. Chris Cedar. Now, I know he was around last season, but uh, getting some minutes now, he's doing also some good things. And Alex Gines from 
the Sydney Kings is another one. Coming in there and you think would have a future in, in the NBL, but um, they're probably the standouts right now when we're thinking of the uh, Rookie of the Year award. Grant, it's now time for what I think is the most popular and my favourite section segment of the It Goes Off podcast, and it's called the Mark Zuckerberg Minute. Well, I'm almost spent that time. Uh, and that's where we, we like you to join in the conversation. We invite your feedback. Hit me on the Twitter, Andrew Gaze 10 or Grantley Bernard, or go to the NBL Facebook page and just punch us out a question that you'd like us uh, to address. And each week, we give an incentive. The person that Grantley Bernard deems to be the best question asked in the Mark Zuckerberg Minute will take home this Official NBL Spalding Game Ball. The real deal. It's not the imitation version of it. It's valued about 129 bucks. So, well worth the effort to jump on the Facebook or the Twitter pages to punch us out a question. What have you got for us off the social media, Grantley? Social media. Very, very social. <laughs> Anthony Wadwell asks, has Trevor Gleeson finally given Liam Rush the green light or has he learned his role in the Tigers system as a four-man? I think it's a, a combination of both. And he's playing 3-4, and, and really he's a three-man, uh, Liam Rush. But because of the size issues for the Melbourne Tigers, he has to pinch hit at that four spot. But I think a combination of him getting some opportunity, some more playing time, and coming into a new system, it's always going to be difficult. And the last two games, he has been very, very good. Although they've, uh, they had that, he, he had 20 points in the win over the Gold Coast in round 13. He had 17 points in the loss against the, uh, the the Perth Wildcats. And he also had a very good game against the New Zealand Breakers. So he is coming on and getting those opportunities. And it's like every, once you get that, those, the, the minutes, you have a, a far better chance to contribute. So uh, I think it's a combination of all those factors. He, he could be a chance for the mid-season player of the year. Liam Rush, mid-season. Yeah. He's the best player in the mid-season. Well, we, he's only been doing it for the last uh, yeah, in couple the middle of, of the rounds. season. Well, we just need a little bit more. I think the middle of the season right. goes more than two rounds. Okay, right. Josh Carroll wants to know: Has Aaron Bruce become a better player since his move to the Sydney Kings? He was very good when he first came into the competition, and uh, remember, Aaron Bruce represented Australia at a World Championship, so he's got enormous talent, but. What he's been doing with the Sydney Kings this year in particular, he was solid last year, but this year in particular, he is playing well. He's shooting the ball, putting some points on the board. He's, uh, he's um, renowned for his, the way in which he can distribute. He's playing some good D. So I think, uh, in my opinion, in the NBL, this is his best season. That's a uh, big call. Well, you don't agree with that? No, I'm just saying it's a big call. That it's his best season? Yeah. I would have thought an obvious call myself. Obvious. Uh, All I would say too is that you, you mentioned he played at the World Championships for the did. Brims. Which Not, he did. Well, he was there on the team. He didn't well, get he much. was there. Yeah. He was there. He was on the team. Mm. He was on the team. But but let's also remember that Grasshopper Walsh went to the Olympics. Peter Walsh. Hey, seven foot one. Don't be trying to disrespect the great Grasshopper. <laughs> no, 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 no disrespect uh, at all for the for the great Grasshopper. Well, Grantly, uh, give us your winner this week of the. Official sporting NBL game ball. Who are you going to go with? I think I'm going to go with Josh Carroll, who wanted to know whether Aaron Bruce has become a better player since his move to Sydney. Good choice. Aaron, we will... Uh, no, Aaron's not going to get the ball. He actually gets a touch of that uh, ball quite regularly, week in, week out. But Josh, we are going to get in contact with you. And uh, uh, official NBL sporting game ball is coming your way. Round 15 is upon us, Grantley Bernard, and if people want to go out there and see an exciting game of basketball, where do they go? And you want to get out there and buy a ticket. Sold out in Perth, sold out at the, the Melbourne Tigers game. A lot of sellouts going on uh, around the INET NBL. It all starts on Friday night with a big triple treat. It's the Wildcats at home to the Gold Coast Blaze. New Zealand Breakers are at home to the Adelaide 36ers, and the Wollongong Hawks looking to break their losing streak at home against the Cairns Taipans. On Saturday, it's the Townsville Crocs against the Sydney Kings. And on Sunday, must, 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 must win for both teams. The Melbourne Tigers against the Gold Coast Blaze. That should be an absolute beauty. That one is going to be one of the games uh, broadcast 
on one, and as you mentioned, Grantley, it's important for both these teams. The team that you don't want to talk about until they win a few games, they've now got a losing I think they're six and seven now, so they've got some uh, issues. Refusing to talk about the Gold Coast Blaze until two wins, they need to string together three. Three wins, they need to, to string together. Again, another outstanding performance by uh, you, Grantley Bernard. We need to pay homage and uh, respect to those that provide us to put on this wonderful competition we call the Ironet NBL and also this uh, podcast. And it all starts with the naming ride sponsor, Ironet Connect Better, One Centibet, and One Sporting Wrenchmart, and Virgin Australia. Oh, getting a little bit better with the Virgin Australia. Uh, thanks very much for your company. It is an exciting time in the NBL. Get out there and check out your team and join us next week where we have a look at all the winners and losers and all the goings on in round 15 in the number one Ironet NBL podcast in the universe. That's right, the universe. And it's called It Goes Off.